Well, hello, my friends. Welcome to Granny B's house. Are you having a good day? Oh, I hope so. Are you being kind to all those people around you? I know you are. You're just learning so much about kindness from the stories Granny B reads to you. I'm glad, I'm glad it's changing you a little bit then, making you a better person to be around. Well, I have a story today. It's about the pigeon and the peacock. And it's a story about, you know, accepting yourself the way you are and not trying to be like other people. So um, it's about these birds that live in the Central Park in New York. So let me just say, it's the pigeon and the peacock and it's written by Jacqueline Belanger. And she's very wise. She has some very good advice here. Okay, now, there's a lot of words in this book, so Granny B has to pay close attention so I get all the words right for you. So you listen carefully. In the heart of New York City, atop the tallest tree in Central Park, stood neighborhood of Birdhatton. Instead of Manhattan, they call it Birdhatton. All the birds in the park lived there, from the most colorful of cardinals to the grayest of pigeons. They sang together and ate together and were happy together, coming up with new games to play every day. Doesn't that sound like fun? All right, what else? Oh, look at those pretty birds. One bird was determined to be in charge of coming up with the games, as well as deciding when to play them. His name was Pepper Pigeon, and he had gray feathers that stood out among the leaves. Pepper's best friends were Daisy Dove, who had gray feathers just like Pepper's, Carmen Cardinal and Finnegan Finch, who both had the brightest, most colorful and delicate feathers in all of Central Park. Well, Pepper always boasted that he was the bird who sang the most, ate the most, and was the happiest. But Pepper had a little secret. He was not always the happiest. Pepper always looked at Carmen and Finnegan's feathers and wished he had some of those bright, beautiful feathers. And those perfect small wings. He found his wings to be too big and his gray feathers too ugly. Daisy tried to get her friend Pepper to think his gray feathers were just as beautiful as all the other colorful feathers in the park. Forget about that, silly, she said. Just come and play with us. Pepper heard Daisy's words, but he still felt sad whenever he looked at Carmen and Finnegan. Poor sad Pepper. To make his heart happy, Pepper always came up with silly things to stand out among his friends. He would make funny faces to make his friends laugh. He looked for shiny items around the park and wore them as funky hats, even if they were sticky. Yikes. He did dangerous tricks to keep his friend's eyes on him, even if he really did not want to do them. Oh my goodness, that is dangerous. He's sticking his wing in a beehive. Oh my. And he always decided what they played and how they played it. As long as he was in charge and people listened to him, 
everything was okay. Pepper felt his friends loved him and he was happy. One day while playing at the Central Park Zoo, Pepper and his friends saw Mr. Magoose, the zookeeper. He brought in a huge box. Pepper, Daisy, Carmen, and Finnegan stared in awe, imagining what could be inside. But they did not go near the box while Mr. Magoose was near, for they were scared of being seen and caught by the big orange cat. The big orange cat did not like when birds from the park were in the zoo. It was his job to scare them away. Oh my, I would be scared of that big orange cat if I was a little bird. Once Mr. Magoose and the big orange cat had left, Pepper and his friends flew down to inspect that mysterious box. What could it be, asked Pepper. It must be a new animal, said Finnegan. Maybe a penguin, exclaimed Carmen. Maybe a seal, declared Daisy. They could all see just a small hint of blue and green feathers peeking from the shadows of the box. Pepper had never seen feathers as pretty as these. Excuse me, said Daisy as she flew down and sat on top of the box. Knock, knock, knock. Who are you? Oh my, look at there. From out of the shadows came dashing bright feathers of the strongest blue and the strongest green Pepper had ever seen. A long bright blue neck followed that looked down upon Pepper and his friends. My name is Preston Peacock. And the strange creature said in a deep voice, I am new to the zoo. He slowly climbed out of his cage and as he did, the whole gang gasped at his enormous tail. Pepper couldn't even count the amount of colors that were painted into it. Welcome to Central Park, said Daisy with a smile. Would you like to play with us? All right, said, Pe said Preston, but only if we play Duck, Duck, Goose. That's the only game I like to play. Well, oh wow, said Carmen Cardinal. What an amazing tale. I know, said Preston. It came in very handy for my days skydiving in Spain. The friendly birds oohed and odd, but Pepper didn't even know what a Spain was. All his friends seemed so happy and he felt his cheeks getting redder and redder. Over the next few days, Carmen, Finnegan, and even Daisy were more interested in Preston than Pepper. Preston told stories of all his adventures at each zoo he had lived at from San Diego to Singapore. Oh boy, he told them about the time he surfed outside the San Diego Zoo, the time he went to the top of Pike's Peak outside of the Cheyenne Mountain Zoo, and even promised he had once ridden a dragon in Beijing. Can you imagine? Everyone was excited for a new friend. Pepper, however, was not. He had a strange feeling in his stomach whenever he looked at Preston and his friends laughing and playing. Suddenly, Pepper had an idea. Maybe if I do a new trick, all my friends will pay attention to me again, he thought. Pepper flew around the park, collecting every item he needed. 
then flew over to his friends. He began juggling balls while making silly faces, and his friends smiled and laughed. Pepper felt great until one by one, he began to lose control of all the balls and they began flying in all directions. Preston, seeing a chance, swooped under Pepper and with a swoosh, caught each one with his magical wings. Carmen, Daisy, and Finnegan stared at Preston in awe, enchanted. Pepper felt his cheeks go red and his eyes sting. He didn't know what this feeling was and all he wanted to do was run away. As he felt a tear in his eye, Pepper soared quickly to a nearby branch so his friends wouldn't see him cry. It's no use, thought Pepper. My gray feathers and I will never stand out no matter what silly things I do. Daisy Dove realized that Pepper was sad and she tried to make him feel better again. She told him that he didn't need any colorful feathers or tricks or silly hats. We love you just the way you are, said Daisy. No more, no less. Just come and play with us. No matter what Daisy did or said, Pepper still felt sad. And that sadness began to fill his heart even more. Then from his hideout on that branch, Pepper saw the big orange cat moving slowly toward his gang of friends ready to attack and no one had noticed him yet. Before Pepper could warn his friends, the big orange cat jumped into the zoo pen, hissing at the birds. <gasps> oh no! Squawk! As soon as Preston saw the big orange cat, he let out the biggest squawk and began running off back to his box pushing Carmen, Finnegan, and Daisy in front of the cat to save himself. Oh no! Pepper watched it all from his hideout and suddenly, without thinking, flew down as fast as he could to save his friends. Swoosh, swoosh, Pepper batted his wings in Big Orange Cat's face. Meow, meow, Big Orange Cat growled an annoyance unable to open his eyes from how fast Pepper was beating his wings. Oh, Pepper is such a hero. The big orange cat chased Pepper all around the zoo, nearly catching him a couple of times with his claws. Pepper kept flying and running, making sure the big orange cat was as far away as possible from where his friends were hiding. Pepper suddenly noticed an empty cage on the other side of the zoo with enough room between its bars for him, but not for the big orange cat. Pepper flew as fast as he could towards it. As Pepper raced to the cage, big orange cat followed closely behind. Pepper flew gracefully through the bars and with a mighty swoosh of his big wings, he slammed the cage door shut. Big Orange Cat was trapped. Pepper returned to the pen where his friends were and Preston came out from his box where he was hiding. Daisy looked at Preston disappointed and said, why did you push me in front of the Big Orange Cat? That really scared me and I thought you were a dragon fighter. Preston looked down and said, I'm sorry, I was nervous about my first day and I told a lot of lies. I've only seen a dragon from far away. The big orange cat scared me a lot, but I should have been a better friend and protected you all. 
That's when Pepper realized Preston wasn't the strongest bird in the wild. He was just scared of being a new bird in the gang. And Pepper was about... Let me read that sentence again. He was just as scared of being a new bird in the gang as Pepper was about not having beautiful wings. But he had no reason to be scared or sad, and neither did Pepper. I'm sorry, too, Pepper added. I was so sad about not standing out with my gray wings, I forgot that I just want to have fun with you all. And that's what makes me happy. That makes us happy too, said Carmen and Finnegan. Yes, you should love yourself just as you are. We already do, said Daisy to both Pepper and Preston. Pepper, thanks to your big, wonderful feathers, added the thoughtful Daisy Dove. You saved us from the big orange cat. From that day on, Pepper, Preston, Daisy, Carmen, and Finnegan spent their days playing at the zoo together, always thinking of new games to play together. The kindness in their hearts was always more important to them than the brightness of their feathers. And so, in Bird Hatton, lying atop the tallest tree in Central Park, a lesson was learned by our five feathery friends. The outside doesn't matter, but the inside always does. Never forget to accept yourself and love your friends for who they are. Can I read that again? Because I think it's really important. The outside doesn't matter, but the inside always does. Never forget to accept yourself and love your friends for who they are. Isn't that a wonderful lesson? Well, Granny B loves you for who you are. And I hope you love yourself for who you are because I have a feeling you're pretty terrific. Now you come back and see Granny B again, okay? Bye-bye. <laughs>